Here we're gonna pray from you. We're gonna do this work. Do anyone go here? Let's just pray with this sister as she launches out this I am in me. Yes. So we want to just launch that out. The nice. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, beautiful gift that you put upon this land. To do your will, to do your purpose, and to overwhelm you, Lord, with the anointing. Let that anointing just flow through her. Watch over her angelic host. Just lift her up constantly and earnestly. Yes. Father, that every one she touches, she touches the heart. And they shall be delivered, set free. We just ask, Father, that you should watch over her and her family. Let this be a tremendous family of grace and mercy and purpose and precision in every way. Father, we just we just launch her into her destiny. Yes, God. Into her destiny of greatness and goodness. Almighty God, Almighty God. Join me here. Let's say it to the Lord. Yes, God. I will open doors no man can close. Yes. And I will close doors no man can open. Every step that you take, I will take first. Yes, God. Amen. When you look to me with all your heart and you say, Father, which way do I go? I will lead thee, I will guide thee, and I will bless thee. I will bless thee when you go out. I will bless thee when you come in. I will never leave you. Yes. I'll never forsake you. Yes. Lo, I will be with you always. I will meet every need that you need, every want that you want. When you say within your heart, but Lord, I can't do this. It's hard for me. It is nothing. Yes. It is nothing to me, for I am the one that will lead you. I am the one that will guide you. I own the cattle on the thousand hills, but I also own the hills as the gold and the silver. Yes. And it is you. It is you that I will use. In a greater measure. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is a tremendous. ministry. Well, I want to thank uh, Ray Rochelle for allowing me to come today and, and voice God's opinion on what he's doing. I want to, uh, I don't know where we're at with the uh, uh, mini squat here. Huh? May 19th through the 21st. May 19th to 21st, yeah. So hope everyone can attend. Joanne will be here. I'll be here. Um, who else? Apostle Kathy. Apostle Kathy will be here. And so this is something we do that me and Jay has developed years ago. Two Rivers Native American Training Center. And it's basically Jay's idea to do the squat because we started out as a Bible school. And that's all you need in Oklahoma is another Bible school, right? There's, there's just about 30,000 of them here. And so, but Jay said, well, this is not good enough. Uh, we, we just, things are too slow. We need to get troops into the reservations 
immediately. I can't wait and continue to wait for three, two or three years and to send them in. So we begin to uh, develop SWAT, Strategic Warriors of Training. Yes. This, this is one of the teachings I do there at SWAT, and I thought I'd bring it to you just as a precursor of what to expect with SWAT training. Uh, we are warriors in Christ. You're gatekeepers. You're warriors of these gatekeep keep the, of these gates, and you're gatekeepers that are so anointed, so blessed, so overwhelmed with His presence. And you need to understand what a gatekeeper is. I want to talk about this morning the, the Amalek spirit, First Samuel 30, 1 and 2. Uh, am I not getting this right? about the uh, first Samuel, the Amalek spirit, um, between a promise and fulfillment. Now it happened when David and his man came with Ziglak. Now these are, there's a lot of hard words in here, and that's all Spanish to me, so y'all have, have to help me out. Uh, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglak on the third day that the Amalekites had invited the south, Ziglag, attacked, attacked Ziglag, and burned it with fire. Next one, please. Next slide. Oh, there you go. Ziglag means a wilderness of ruin enclosed with grief and great stress and, and uncertainty, doubt. It's not a time to wait on God's promises. And I think sometimes we just we want to wait around. Come on. And we wait too long until we're all in grief, all in stress, all just wanting to give up, all those uncertainties. So Ziglak is a place of ruin enclosed with grief. Enclosed with grief. I don't know if you've ever been there before. I have. Enclosed with grief, great grief. Next slide, please. Amalekite is a people, a warlike people that licks up pure evil. It's, it's likened unto a dog that just licks up everything. That leaves nothing. Great discouragement. Great discouragement. When the Amal that Amalekite spirit comes in, it uh, tears up everything, ruins everything, brings pure evil, leaves nothing. There's nothing left when the Amalekites come. That spirit comes. There's great discouragement. How many have ever been there? With great discouragement. Next one, please. Now, while David was away, this all took place and had taken kept the women captivity and those that were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. How many knows when something or someone is stolen from you, that brings more grief than knowing that they're actually gone? Amen. That brings more grief when you don't know whether they're still here or not. It just it just wells at you and overwhelms you with great grief. So they knew how to get to David. 
They knew how to get to David. They said, well, we will just let him wander. Wife, children, people. We'll just have him to wander if they're still alive, if they're still living. Next slide. So David and his man came to the city and there it was burnt with fire, their wives and their sons. Now listen to this. Their wives, everybody say wives, wives. Sons, sons, daughters, daughters. have been taken. Captivity. In captivity. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep. Ever been there? When you just can't cry no more. There's no more tears. You, just, you know, there's a power in weeping. You just can't weep. Oh, you, you might conjure up something, but there's a power in weeping. It takes a lot of power to weep, but when you get to the point where there's no more power to weep, no more power to weep, that's devastating. You've just lost your wife, you just lost your son, you just lost your daughter. People that you know have been taken. And you don't know what they're doing to them. You don't know if they're living or dead. And so it gets you to the point where you can't even weep no more. Next slide, please. So it brings you to a discouragement. One of the greatest discouragement comes through your family and finances. No money. Now let's notice this. Lost your family, lost finances. David has lost 13 years of wealth and family. 13 years of wealth and family. And it's three days before he's to be a king. He's just getting ready to be a king of his people, of a place, of a country, of a nation. And he's lost everything. He's lost his family, lost his finances. He's worked 13 years for this, for, for the finances and with the family and everything. He has lost. Great discouragement comes through family and finances. That's the reason you have to get your breakthrough, people. You have to pray. This impact center is going to get their finances. It's going to come through. It's going to break through because you're the family. You're the family. Next slide. David lost family, wealth, loyalty, 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 and the power to weep. Now realize that everyone stopped being loyal to David. I don't know if you've ever been there. I have. When people that have been so loyal to you, then all of a sudden they stop being loyal to you. They're no longer loyal. For some, something happened, some, something went on that they just stopped and left. They left the church, left the ministry. Left you high and dry. You loved them. And you thought they loved you. And all of a sudden, no loyalty. 
Now that will hurt. The, the, the other stuff is bad enough. The, the powerless to weep and the wealth and the family. But when there's no loyalty. When you lost the loyalty of your people. Your friends. Your family. No one trusts you. <laughs> believes in you. <laughs> anymore. Next slide, please. David was greatly distressed. Everybody say distressed. distressed. For the people spake of stoning him. Because the, the soul of all the people was grieved. When, it's not so much that you're, you're wrong. But when people get so grieved, they will turn against you because of the grief. Every man for his son and for his daughters. And they're looking to the leader. Why didn't you protect them? Why didn't you cover them? Why didn't you uh, <clears throat> able to bring them back to us? David encouraged himself. Now notice what he's doing here. When you lost loyalty and no one cares about you, there's times that you have to encourage yourself so you don't have no excuse. Well, the church's not for me, the pastor's not for me, the people don't love me, no. There's no excuse. You still have the ability to encourage yourself. You've got to encourage yourself. When no one else will pat you on the back. When no one else will smile at you. When no one else will love you. you got to turn to God. Encourage yourself. So if you're sitting here today expecting someone to love on you and appreciate you and pat you on the back, it may not come, but that's not an excuse. Pastor Ray is getting ready to have a leadership meeting tonight. In leadership, you don't always expect someone to encourage you. Because it may be, it's not because they don't love you, they just don't know what you're doing. They don't know where you're at. They know what's going on. And so we have to, David had to encourage himself in the Lord, his God, his God. That's his place to encourage himself. That's very crucial that you understand that, that you have to encourage, as a leader, you get to the point where you have to encourage yourself. Because other people, not that they're against you, they just don't know what you're doing. What in the world are you doing? I am Indian. What in the world are you doing? What are you talking about? I am Indian. In our ministry, sometimes we just have to encourage ourselves. How I do that, I got a place on the land there where we're at. And I go there, it's, it's what I call my sacred place or the sacred place. And it's just rocks we sit on and I sit on. I sit on them and just talk to God or sometimes I just shut up. Everybody say shut up. <laughs> shut up and listen. Sometimes when we go to God, we, you don't give Him a chance to say anything to you. Because you're so busy complaining and telling all the wrongs. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and listen. Let that, uh, what I call the shut up anointing come. Just let it anoint you. Let it just overwhelm you with the anointing. Just by shutting up. So God can anoint you. Next slide, please. So David <clears throat> had mighty warriors all around him. 
that had great achieve these were great achievers with great substance, mighty, powerful, champions, warriors, but they are devastated. How many knows the enemy knows where to touch you? To hurt you. He knows just exact. Don't ever think just because you're you go to the impact center that Satan, I'm never going to touch you. He's studying you. And where can I touch her or touch him to hurt her or to hurt him? The enemies always studies you. From the moment you get up in the morning, he's studying you. Where can I touch her? Where can I touch the family? Where can I touch the church? The hurt of the church? The hurt of the ministry? The hurt of the family? We are warriors. And if we're true warriors, then the enemy is going to study you to hurt you. You can have all the achievers, all the warriors and mightiness and the champions and the powerful ones around you. But when they get devastated and you're left all alone, you need to seek God. Next slide, please. So here's David under great distress. Under He's vexed. He's under great pressure. Because he has great loss. Sometimes in ministry, people, you will lose the will to fight. You will. You will lose the will to fight the enemy. I've been there. And I'm sure you've been there. You just don't have the will anymore. And we just want to give up. And of course we blame this all on God, right? It's all God's fault. God got me into this predicament. God made me get in here. God, you know, made me be a minister, a pastor, or whatever. God told me to get this building. God told me to buy that car. God told me to marry this woman or marry that man. We lose the will to fight. So you're going to have to learn to seek God for yourself. It's not always someone there to seek Him for you. Next slide, please. The word bind up be strong courageous strengthen re fortify or repair to restrain restrain and conquer so when it says to bind and loose we have to take on this ability to be strong be courageous be strengthened Repair, fortify, to restrain and conquer. That is the destiny of a warrior, a true warrior right here. This is the destiny of a warrior. A warrior is to be strong, courageous, to be able to be strengthened, to repair, fortify, to, to restrain and conquer the enemy. That's the reason we, there's warriors in Christ. The Bible says that the Lord is a warrior. Does it not? Yes. The Lord is a warrior. A lot of people don't like to hear that warrior because it means fight. It means battle. It means going to war, warfare. 
And we don't want to do that. We want to have peace. We don't want to just tiptoe through the tulips. Lay around on the grass. But we are warriors in a warfare and in that we have to be strong and courageous. We have to restrain and conquer. And sometimes it takes you to do that. It takes you to seek God for yourself. Next, next one, please. Kingdom authority to bind or, or to loose earth and heaven. We, we know that in Matthew 16. This gives you the right to enter into the kingdom yourself. You have that authority. David encouraged himself to enter in the kingdom. Yes. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. I don't believe, and this is just me, that God says welcome. And I don't believe any tribal language, whether it's Latino or any other tribe, whether it's Cheyenne, Blackfoot, Comanche, Apache, Kiowa, whatever, or Uchi, can really say, welcome. But I believe what they say in their language is, come well. Come well. Leave your stuff outside. You come well. Yes. Mama, you said, take off those old muddy shoes, old dusty shoes. And come on in. This nation, America, has welcomed all kinds of gods, all kinds of spirits. And now we're in a mess. Now we're in a mess because we welcomed every god that there was. When we used to say, this nation is a Christian nation. United States of America is Christian first. In God we trust. But we have welcomed every God, every demon, every religion that you can think of. And we wonder why things are all in a mess. Come well. Come well. Leave that. You know, I always, when a warrior or a hunter would come into the encampment, the old people, the elders, would kind of watch them and see what's on their face. If they're angry or if there's a lot of fear, they would tell them to go. Go to the sacred place. Go, go and pray, whatever. But don't bring that fear into our village. Don't bring that that anger into this encampment because it's like a disease that will spread and spread and spread before long. Everybody's afraid. What's wrong with this nation? Everybody's afraid. Come on, you're on it now. Fox News, CNN, spreading fear. Be afraid because there's no God. There is a God. There is a God in David. There's a mighty God. Amen. And we have the right to enter into the kingdom mm -hmm. ourselves. Hallelujah. Next slide, please. Now, the number three, I just threw this in. <coughs> Resurrection. Christ was dead three days and nights. Jesus prayed at the garden three times before the cross. Placed on the cross there the third hour. Died on the ninth hour, which had been three o'clock somewhere around there. Three hours of darkness, six to nine. Next slide. I just threw that in there just for commercial. <laughs> 
Discouragement and pressure. The enemy will use this against you to stop your destiny, to keep you from the promised land of God. To keep you from the promised land of God. Because God has a lot of promises and we have not touched maybe 5% of the promises of God. Amen. There are thousands of promises and we need to touch them and know them and honor them. The next slide, please. Especially when there's discouragement and pressure. I call this the freedom land, the promised land, a place where you, you flow with God. You find your gifts and callings. A place of favor in the promised land. A place of authority. A place of peace and rest. A place of more and rest and less stress. More rest, less stress, more rest, less stress. A place where you flow with the truth. That's the freedom land. That's the freedom land. That's God's place. That's where you go to receive the promises. How do you receive the promises? You go to the freedom land where you the freedom land where where you can just begin to flow with God. Everybody say just flow with God. And you find that gift and that calling that you have. There's a lot of people. Everyone has a gift and calling, but do you know your gift and calling? Come on. You that are leaders, you have gifts and callings. That's the reason you need to gather the leaders up to find out their gifts and their callings. That may not be your gift. That may not be your calling. But you need to know which is your gift and which is your calling. Amen. A place of favor. The favor of God. You can't beat it. That's better than Walmart. I mean, just a favor of God. Just the favor of God. It's just all around you. That, that place of authority. Because you're a gatekeeper. You have authority. A place where there's peace and rest. Everybody say peace and rest. And you know you need it. I can see it on your face you need it. Rest, more rest and less stress where you flow with the truth. And the truth will what? Set you free. Next slide, please. The freedom land determines your res response to problems. When there's that promised land, we, we can learn to respond to your discouragements every day. And we do have discouragements. We have the promises of God to win the battles of God. To come against the enemy to destroy the enemy, to win the battle. Just, that's just the way it is. We win that battle. Next one, please. We all have promises from God. Those who overcome have learned to process the pain of discouragement. David had to process his pain and discouragement and the pressure that he had. Satan comes hard because you're close to a victory. <clears throat> How many really fighting a battle right now? Yes. You're getting ready. You're right that far, that close to your victory. The enemy will come at you harder and harder when you're closer to a victory. Then you're away from the victory. You're that far, that close to a victorious moment. Next slide. We get emotional when there's discouragement and grief and anger and fear. Does not mean you're unspiritual. Not sin. Unless you give it permanent residence. You don't ever give permanent residence to fear, to discouragement, to grief, to anger, sin. You don't give. It doesn't mean these things won't come against you. They will. Sin comes against you. 
Sin wants to come in you. But you don't give it. You're not welcome here. You're not welcome here. Grief, you're not welcome here. Discouragement, you're not welcome here. Anger, you're not welcome here. Fear, you're not welcome here. Sin, you're not welcome here. No permanent residence. Sorry. You can't rent this place. You can't buy this place. You can't stay in this place. This is a place of God. This is a place of peace and rest. This is a place of great courage. Next one, please. Never grant temporary emotions permission to become permanent in your life. Never grant a temporary emotion permission to become permanent in your life. Fear, anger, anxiety. We may go there. We may get some of that. But if they're not to stay there permanently, you can't, you can't stay there. Those emotions. Next one, please. Everyone was blaming David. You never, it's not going to make it any better. You can blame Radimus back there. All you want. It's not going to make it any better. All that does when you put the blame on somebody, it just increases the grief that you have. It doesn't stop it. doesn't hinder it from getting stronger and stronger. Don't play the blame game. Amen. They were saying amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Next one, please. <coughs> Discourage. Being discouraged is a lie in the kingdom of God. Deception cannot exist because it's what happens to you, but what's happening in you. It's not what's happening to you, it's what's happening in you. Lies come your way and tell you you can't have your breakthrough that's a lie that's right and it's a lie because it's not allowed in me Amen. yes it comes against me it comes against me but there's no residence yeah. i don't give residence and it, 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 it it's uh it's just coming against me it comes my way that's a lie. We are going to get our breakthrough. You're going to get your breakthrough. Yes. But if you let that come into you, well, I'm not going to get my breakthrough. I can't get a breakthrough. You know, I've never got a breakthrough. And uh, Grandpa didn't great, get a breakthrough. Great Grandpa didn't get a breakthrough. My family not get a, got a breakthrough. That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. Breakthroughs do come. They still exist today. They still exist. We, um, last year, I believe it's in, uh, just before June, I believe, May, we had a, a big flood in the big city of Hectorville, Oklahoma. <laughs> and we're not in a valley. But that's the time it rained so much. We got about six and a half inches in two hours. And water just, because our building was a little bit lower than the land around it, it just flowed in and ruined all our carpet in there. It was happened on a Sunday morning. And I walked into church and began to look at the puddles of water all over the carpet. 
And my first thought was, <laughs> wow, what am I going to do? It's almost like God left me, you know. That God didn't exist anymore. But as we begin to pray and believe, and say, well, there's no way because, you know, we thought the insurance would handle it, but our insurance don't have flood coverage because you just don't have floods. But that's a lie that there's no way to make this happen. We begin to pray that Sunday, Monday morning, there was a man called. And he said, Brother Big Pond, uh, the Lord just told me I'm to call you and ask you if you need any help. What do you need? Well, oh boy. And I begin to unload on him and tell him all the things that happened. That our carpet is ruined, some of the walls are ruined. Everything is ruined. And the insurance doesn't seem like they're going to do anything. <coughs> and just so happened this guy built bridges. Big contractor. Big businessman. I said, okay, so he said, I'll come down here tomorrow. So he came down, looked at the situation. He said, well, okay, we'll start on the outside first. He said, I'm going to... We're going to take care of that carpet. It's okay. His wife is uh, one of those decorator. Yeah. What's it called? Interior. Interior. So she came down the next day, and immediately they begin to argue. In a good way. There's good, good arguments when they're talking about money and how, what they're going to do. No, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to replace this. We're going to paint this. And this is what they was. So they, was, they, they were all good. I was certainly good. I just walked. I just stood by and watched them. And so they came in. Long story short, they came in, replaced all the carpet, painted all the walls, put rock. And uh, some have been there. They put rock on the sound booths. They put rock in the front, and they just everything. And they're still not finished. I mean, they want, they want to put carpet in where there's no, <laughs> nothing happened. It's all right. We don't need to change it. No, we need to, everything needs to be consistent. It's okay. So they're still putting money into it. Hallelujah. Still putting money. So, When things happen like that, it's a lie yes. that God can't show up. Right. Next slide, please. Forget is forgiveness. Forgiveness allows you to forget. Forgiveness makes you... Unforgiveness makes you the victim of unforgiveness. We just took communion a while ago. And what that does is launches and releases us into forgiveness. Yes. Allows us to forget. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me. And God said, well, okay, I want to forgive you, but are you going to forget? I want to forgive you of your sins. Now, are you going to forget it? The reason we get back into it, because we won't forget it. Here we go with God again. God, forgive me of my sins. But He said, I'll forgive if you forget. Amen. Next one. Your, your is a battle. Your battle is. Got it back. Yo. He said, yo. <laughs> battle discouraged her. David's real battle wasn't with the Amalekites, Amalekite treasure. It was the discouragement that was in him. That was his real battle. 
Our real battles aren't with a mono. The real battle is the discouragement that I allow to stay in me. I'm discouraged. So I want to take it out on somebody because I'm discouraged. But the real battle is not with people. Not with your brothers and sisters. Come on. But it's that discouragement that you've been carrying around forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Discouragement, discouragement, discouragement. That's the real battle. Next slide. Almost through here. <clears throat> you got to make a decision to wage war on discouragement. Not on the people, but the discouragement that you're carrying. Be willing to do whatever it takes because God can't wait. He really wants to help you. You can help yourself through God. God really wants to help you. So wage war. It's time to go to war against yes. discouragement. Yes. We have thousands upon thousands of churches in this nation that are meeting just right now. I pray that the churches will wage war against discouragement. The tribe, the people, the nation needs to wage war against discouragement. Not against a president, a senator, or a governor, or whatever, but the discouragement that's around them. Next one. So you need to ask your question. Are you, Jesus asked when he's healing the man, basically what he was saying, are you tired? of being tired? Yes. Are you sick of being sick? Then, if you are, take up your bed and walk. That's right. Hallelujah. Get moving. But you've got to get tired of being tired. Yeah. Now, i got to watch how I say that because usually I say tired. <laughs> tired being tired. <laughs> Same effect. Are you sick of being sick? Come on. Yes. Come on, Come ask on. yourself that question. Are you sick of being sick? Are you tired of being tired? Yes. Yes. Next one, please. Let's move, let's move on. Now here God in this whole concept, He is basically He's saying, whatever I did for the, your grandparents, your elders, I'm going to do the same for you. Yes. We've got to remember that. Whatever God did for my grandparents, your grandparents, your loved ones, He's going to do the same for you. I'm a fourth generation minister. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father before me were ministers. They all did well. I'm not saying they were rich financially, but they were rich in spirit. And i got to believe that God is going to do the same for me. Next one, please. This is the same thing. Forget what. Forget what. What God has done for you. Don't ever forget how God has won the battles for you. He has won battles last year, year four last, ten years ago. He's won battles. Don't ever forget those battles that God has won for you. You may have a new battle today. Doesn't matter. God is still God. Yes. And God will never change, the Bible says. Amen. Next slide, please. So here's the Amalek spirit, hell's assassin against your destiny, against your family, against your life. This is a pure evil against your destiny. Next week. Amalek spirit comes at you in four ways. And I want to close with this. 
Number one, he attacks you where you're the weakest. Now you need to know this. The enemy will attack you where you're weakest. Where are you weak at today? Number two, it studies you and attacks you. If you're doing anything, the inkling of an anything for God, He's going to be studying you. He's going to be studying you. You got that? He's going to be studying you. If you're doing anything for God, He's going to be studying you. Number three, He finds your weak spot. Where's your weakest spot? And He waits until you have a weak moment. You let your guard down and boom, He hits you. He tries to destroy you. You that are leaders, you that are stepping into leadership, you need to know these four ways that the enemy, this Amalek spirit, will attack you. Number four, and attach your weak spot in a weak moment. Whenever you're the weakest, that's when he's going to attack you. I want to close with that. It's breakthrough time. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. It's breakthrough time. Yes. Who needs a breakthrough? Yes. I believe it's coming. I believe you're that close. Don't let your emotions ruin your breakthrough. Don't allow your emotions to destroy your breakthrough. You know, some of you tribal people could stand in in behalf of your tribe that needs a breakthrough. Yes. Because we all need breakthroughs. Yes. We all need those moments 